Hello, welcome to the channel and thanks for watching and it's part four of my How to Paint Hero Quest series and in this video I'm taking you through all the stone based scenery with a couple of extras. If you've watched the other parts of the series you'll know I've broken down the scenery into three different batches. For speed, working on a smaller batch helps you get through it faster, it's less intimidating, uh, it gives you enough time for the paint to dry in between each one though versus doing each piece individually. Now, I'm not going to go through how I prepared the models particularly but you'll see it's a pale uh, top coat on here because most of this painting technique is going to use contrast paints because they want a nice quick effect uh, it gives you enough detail you know makes the scenery look nice when we put it on the board now i'm starting off with two paints that are non-contrast the first one here is games workshop retributor armor to give a real nice brass effect i will put the paints up in the top left corner of the screen if you want to follow it exactly or it can just be inspiration now i think brass is a really useful color um, for doing especially medieval models that these are it just sort of adds a nice aged effect and when you're using these metallics not watering these down these are not going on a wet palette or anything like that this is just purely painted uh, onto a palette and straight off you need a nice sort of uh, coverage to not have any of the white showing through because if the white shows through onto this brass it really doesn't make the effect look good so just be careful get a good thorough coverage without spreading onto any of the areas you don't want and that's always the thing you want to try when you are painting and really pick out as many or as little areas of brass as you want see here i'm onto the torture rack type thing and just using the the banded areas with the rivets kind of on there so as much or as little as you want the more you put on the more sort of opulent it's going to look um but again it's up to yourself watch the pictures at the end or at the, at the very beginning about you know how much i've used now moving on to uh, just a, a silver colour. Now you could go as bright or as dark a silver as you wanted. I've gone for a gunmetal, which is a slightly toned down silver because this is scenery is meant to be, you know, the bad guy scenery. So you don't want it too bright and garish, I don't think, because the good guys are the ones that might be a bit shinier. But again, going through, I put the silver onto the mirror. Um, you could use that mirror as a painting if you wanted and put some artwork in there, but I'm just keeping it simple uh, for the purposes of, you know, this scenery set. And then working through the pieces exactly as you've done with the brass and picking out those silver areas and again try not to drift this onto any of the the white patches and now the basic paints are done we're on to kind of the easier stage in a way we're on to the contrast paint now we're picking this basilicanum gray it's a really nice scheme that will give that kind of stone effect now you are putting this on in, in a relatively thick layer what you don't want to do is you don't want it to really clump and go on and get to the point that it's dripping off because it'll be too thick and it will make it almost black. So spread the paint around if you think it's becoming too thick. Um, and just really it's that kind of practice from doing the pieces. By now if you're following along this series you'll have done you know the doors, the other scenery. So you'll kind of be used to using contrast paints by now. And I was really getting used to using contrast paints at this point because uh, again this is the first time for me. Now on this table you'll see here the table is built up of a series of layers of stone. And I just made sure that I left some of those layers free for the next paint colour we're going to use after this. Using the sarcophagus, the kind of textured details and the moulded carvings on here, I want to do a different stone colour. So I'm being careful to go around those areas and not let any of this grey drift in to that texture. Now you could do it all the same colour grey, but I think a bit of variance is good. Now a note to talk about when doing contrast paints, in case you haven't listened to our talk on previous videos, you've got to be really careful when you put these layers on that you get right into the cracks. You can see here, just making it touch the silver, but not flow over onto the silver. So it can be a bit of a delicate balancing act because you put too much on, it will flow onto the other colors you've already used, not enough, and you're gonna have that white showing through. So do practice to be a little bit careful moving through. Now just using uh, the Wildwood Brown color, onto the logs and then we're going to move on to the piece of scenery so as much as i said before this is primarily stone based terrain which a lot of it is there is a lot of wood showing through on here so again you could have chosen to do the down pillars on here which i i take to be wooden legs with how the carving is worked but equally you could probably do them stone and you'd get away with it but i think the base of there is wood and you have to be a little bit tricky and careful when you're going around especially on the torture device here you've got the kind of wooden roller I'm using a thinner brush here than what I've used so far and just taking it very carefully and getting it into the gaps because you don't really want to be going over too much onto the areas you've already painted. If you do, though, you can clean this off and you'll see this later on when I do put it into a few places. I've left a couple of mistakes in the video. As much as this is the stone-based terrain, uh, the chair here, there's no stone colour on there at all, but it's just a small piece to add on um, and just work there. Now, I'm doing most of the moulding in the dark brown wood colour you could choose to you know paint some of this molding in like a metallic color or you could do it gold or whatever you wanted but i'm keeping most of it in the dark brown with just a couple of patches in the pale color we're going to come to later 
Now the weapon rack, this was quite fiddly to actually get around. A lot of wood here. I ended up painting this in kind of almost two batches, doing the bottom half first, standing it to dry for a few minutes, then working on the top half. There are a couple of places you can hold while you're painting it, but I just you know wanted it to dry a little bit so it wouldn't get too messy. And now we're working on the second stone colour. You could have done the whole sarcophagus and all the stone things in the grey stone colour. But when you see this kind of thing in, you know, churches or cathedrals, wherever, if you ever visit, you will often see that they use two types of stone, like a granite and a sandstone. So I'm using this Nasdreg yellow to represent that kind of sandstone colour. And then we're going round and putting that into all the areas that we left clear when we did the original um, grey stone colour. Now it does look quite yellow and vibrant here, but when it dries, it does dry off and goes a little bit more sandy coloured. But that's why it's important that when you were doing those areas to start with, not to get any of that grey paint on because it'll give a weird kind of streaky effect if you do. So you've got to be careful when you were doing those original layers to get this effect kind of right when you're doing it. I'm using the same yellow on the areas of the wooden chair that I didn't paint with the dark brown. And I think it works nicely just having a couple of carved areas on that chair in a different color. You could have done the whole thing that dark brown, or like I said before, you could pick out some of this detail in you know, gold or silver if you wanted to. But I think the yellow just is a nice contrast and also helps to pull the scenery together well. Now I mentioned before about the table having that kind of multi-layered stone area. So I'm just taking again some of this kind of sandstone color and putting that on the uh, stone plinth just below where the book is on there. Again, just for a little bit of visual difference across the table. And I think that's the point of this kind of painting style. It's adding enough visual difference, but making it quick to get the scenery on the table fast. Now, I did pick here for the uh, lion rampant on the what looks to be a hero shield that's been abandoned. I did the Nasdreg yellow as well. I do change my mind later on, um, but it serves as a good base coat. You can see here I made a mistake and it flows onto the white a bit much. So I've just cleaned the paint off the end of the brush and with a sort of slightly damp brush, just taking that excess paint off. Now, excess paint is something you've got to get used to with contrast. It's very easy to put too much on. You can see here, put a little bit much on there. So I've taken the bulk of the paint off and just spread that paint around for this leather effect because we don't really want the book to look exceptionally dirty. So you've got to kind of learn and experiment that when you're using contrast paints, see what you like, see what effect you want. You might want it to have put, you know, tons of the snake bite leather color onto the book and have it looking like that. It's entirely your choice. Now back onto the weapon rack, again going through and putting this leather colour uh, onto the handles of the weapons. And that's the thing with this technique, it's going through each piece using the same paint on each piece and hopefully by the time you get around to the first piece, the paint has mostly dried so that you're not going to take too much off it if you knock it. Now using a totally different brown onto the front of the shield for this orcish shield that's there. Again, you could have done this in the exact same wood colour you did the rest of the weapon rack, but I just wanted it to look a little bit different on there, so just experimenting with a different brown. Now here's a really nice, simple technique to do fire colours. So we're going to use three colours here on the fire. We're starting off with a very bright, uh, the Bad Moon Yellow, and putting that on the very base of the fire where it touches the wood, moving three quarters up, you see in there. Then before the yellow dries, we're taking the red, and we're working that from the sort of a third the way up to two thirds the way up, up to the flames there and as you've seen I've just managed to paint the wood while doing that so again clean the brush and uh, get the excess paint out and then just use that wet brush to wipe that paint away and then carry on now what I'm doing now is smearing that red a little bit into the yellow while both paints are still um, wet and it gives you sort of slightly orangey tones or whatever before we move on and put the last color on now the very tips of the flames we're using the contrast black legion color and because as the flames go up, the idea is it gets darker and sootier and whatever. So we're putting that on the ends where you can still see the white. Again, all this paint is still wet. It's been done really quickly, one after the other. And then once it's on at the ends, you kind of just use your brush to smudge it around a little, put some little dots of black at the bottom, um, put, your, put your brush back into the black at the top very gently, and just move some of this paint around so you can still see the yellow, red, black, but there's bits of yellow at the top, there's bits of black at the bottom, and so on through there, and it looks like kind of living fire. Very quick technique, took all of 15, 20 seconds, just a little bit different um, to add in. Now there are tons of fire painting techniques, and you can go to the nth degree doing that, but again, I just wanted something simple, moving on. Now I'm taking that bright yellow we use in the flames there, and putting that back across that lion rampant, just at the very top, because it didn't feel quite vibrant enough on there. Now, when you look at this, it doesn't look uh, very nice at the moment, this kind of uh, rack we're looking at here. 
but when we do the wash color on there it will pull all these tones together so it is a quick painting technique to get your scenery on the table fast so you know if you want it super detailed probably not the painting technique for you but when it's all cumulatively done it's not too much effort and will look really nice and enhance your games of hero quest and that's kind of the painting scheme i'm going for you know not going to the nth degree of doing the work just keeping it looking nice you'll see that i've used the same red we used in the fire uh, to do the pads on the chairs because that's a colour you see you know if you ever go to a castle or something you're visiting that that they've redone to look like it would have done red seems to be that colour that gets used quite a lot quite a regal colour and obviously this is the sorcerer's lair so it works quite well red also works quite well i think for the rags that are on the torture rack kind of area so i've just picked those out in red quite a vibrant bold colour and it'll stand out nicely on there and then once you've got these rags painted i've also used the red just to dot some very small parts of it around the shackles where there's still part of, a, of an arm on there and just some bits of red onto the stone surface and on some of the chains just to put a little bit of gore on there nothing too fancy but it does look quite nice when the end effect is done so we're at the very end stages now so i'm with the little shields around the sarcophagus you could you know go mad paint all sorts of different colors and little symbols Again, talking about being basics, but adding a little bit of impact. I've just taken the red and gone around and painted some red on all those shields there. Again, just to tie it together and some visual difference. Now we are going to do the arm that's on there. So we're taking some skeleton horde and it is primarily a skeletal arm. So we're just dropping that skeleton base color onto the arm and then moving that same color onto the candles that's on this kind of uh, spell book table. Because really, um, you could have left them white, but I think if it's been white, they're going a bit dirty when we do the wash stage we're going to do later. Dropped a tiny bit of yellow onto the candle flames. It looks quite nice. And now I was going to finish at this point and move on to the wash stage you're going to see later. But on the door video, if you've watched that, the video we do with the doors, the doors have got a lot of moss and ivy and things growing up them. So I thought it'd be fun to take some of that green and just put little patches of green in random areas across all the stone pieces. And you can see that again on the table here. So just trying to tie together what I did in video one with the doors. Now it's the Seraphim Sepia wash stage. So this is the shade paint from Games Workshop. And we're just putting a liberal coating over every single part of these models. So again, not too thick. Um, but if you do go too thick it just makes it a bit more dirty looking you can get dirtier looking washes but we want this one to be somewhere in between a nice balance just to pull the colors together now in case you're wondering how i get the bottom bits where i'm holding the model as soon as i've done the rest of it the bits where my fingers were touching the model i literally plonk it onto my painting area and then just paint the parts where i was holding it so do not do this on your table or anything that you don't want to get messy but i've obviously got that painting mat now I completely forgot about the lettering on the book. This stage you want to do before you do the wash really. All this is, is the same black contrast paint you've used, very small amount on a very thin brush, and you're almost dotting and, and scrabbling and making it look a little bit like writing on the book. Now I've done it in reverse and, in, and behind, but you want to do that before the wash. And that's it, once the wash has dried, this is pre-varnish, I always give them my models a matte uh, varnish to protect it for gaming so it's a little bit shiny because that wash has given a shiny effect but this is what the figures look like at the end and i think the that wash has tied the colors together all very nicely it's quite a cohesive little scheme there i think it's you know for me really looking forward to getting this on the uh, table as a collective of scenery to what it looks like but real happy with how everything's turned out i don't think i'd do anything different particularly it was a nice fast color scheme uh, and i think the pieces of scenery have really taken well to the contrast effect and i do like on the stone scenery you can see here the little bit of blood effect we've put on a little bit of green to represent you know the the moss and the and whatever is going to be growing on this thing in the dungeon and i think that's worked particularly well so really happy with the scheme um i think the flame effect's quite nice on this thing here and probably the nicest piece of scenery is this little one here i think it's worked particularly well so if you did like that like comment subscribe all that youtube jazz and i hope to see you on another video